Good morning, students. Uh, hopefully, you are well. So, uh, before we start our class, uh, I would like to thank uh, everybody for subscribing and liking my videos in this channel. So, these videos basically is to help the students in uh, obtaining uh, their lectures uh, under BCN 1053, uh, Data Communication Networking conducted in University of Malaysia Paham. So hopefully those who are enrolled in this class, okay, you are compulsory to subscribe to this uh, channel and uh, because since this is a part of your uh, student learning time. And uh, for those who are in public who are joining this channel, thank you very much again. And hopefully uh, these lectures can be useful for you in studying the, the content of the data communication networking, which is fall under the Cisco introduction to networking program. So hopefully, uh, this will be benefit to us all. So today, I would like to continue with the lecture on the networking today, module one. So uh, so far, okay, I have been uh, starting the videos from module four because uh, since uh, due to the pandemic, uh, we are in the middle of the semester, so we have conducted almost five or six chapters already. So just for revision, we started at module four. But in order to complete the whole module online, I would like to make a revision for module one as well. So module one, what we introduce you is uh, about networking, basically. So this content, okay, is based on the module one Cisco uh, and the introduction to networking course. So networks basically they are parts of our life these days, okay. But uh, how are they contributing to our life basically? So communication is basically one of the important to us as our reliance on air, water, food, and shelter. In today's world, through the works of networks, through the use of networks, we are connected like never before. So meaning that we are living in a world without boundaries. So what does it mean by world without boundaries? Okay, we are living in a global community where all the humans inside the, the world are connected to each other. So basically, what is a network? So if you look at the network components, okay, networks, okay, every computer on a network is called either a host or end device, okay? So host and end device is a component inside a network. Servers are computers that provide information to end devices, which is email servers, web servers, file servers, okay, or any type of computer servers that you have. Clients are computers that send requests to the servers to retrieve the information. So you might be familiar with the email server, web server, or file server, where you use a lot these days in the, your Google account or something like that. Okay, so they are a part of our network components that comprise of hundreds or thousands of uh, that, uh, thousands of gigabytes of data space uh, in the internet. So if you talk about the peer-to-peer -peer network, okay, so it is a possible to have a device be a client or a server in a peer-to-peer -peer network. So this type of network design is only recommended for very small networks. So, not only we have a larger network, we only we also have a smaller network as well. So usually the smaller networks might be your home network where you connect few PCs with a printer. So all of them are considered as network as well, due to uh, they can be okay. They they have a host and a device attached to each other. So however, different to the larger network, okay, the client and the server take turns uh, between each other. So for example, if a computer is sharing a file, the computer will be the server and the computer receiving the file will become the client, okay? So they are different between the global, a large global network and a peer-to-peer -peer network. So the peer-to-peer -peer networks is basically an easy to set up, okay? They are less complex, they are, low, they are lower cost and used for simple tasks only, okay? Comparing to the larger network. However, they don't have a centralized administration like a large network. Okay, they are not as secure as the large network and they are not scalable. It means they can, it's hard for you to expand the networks. Okay, and also they also have a slower performance in overall. So if you talk about end device, okay, all networks they must have an end device. 
An end device is where a message originates from and where it is to receive. And then data originates with an end device, flows through the network, and arrives at an end, another end device. Okay, if you say that you have a network, there must be a computer that sends the data, which the, the data is originate from, uh, towards the destination of the uh, or the data, which is another end device at the another uh, end of the network. Okay, we talk about the end device. Okay, in the middle we have what we call the intermediary network device. So intermediary network device they interconnect these end device. Okay, an end device usually they cannot connect to each other directly. They have to have they uh, they must have actually an uh, intermediary network device uh, such as switches, wireless access point, routers, and firewall. So you guys usually you cannot get. Uh, network connected between your two smartphones uh, to your, you and your friend's smartphone directly you should have at least another uh, router which is a wireless access point that you connect to it and your friend also connect to it so that you can start transmitting to your friend and your friend can start receiving those information that you transmitted so management of data as it flows through a network is also the role of an intermediary device which includes regenerating and retransmitting those data signals Okay, in case there are problems regarding the data sending uh, uh, send uh, before. So they also maintain information about what pathway exists in the network and they notify other devices of errors and communication failures. So usually we have these symbols okay, in our network that represent wireless router, LAN switch, router, multi-layer switch and also firewall appliances. So all of these are considered as intermediary network devices. And other than end device, intermediary network device, we also require network media in order to create a fully functional network. So communication across a network is carried to a medium which allows a message to travel from source to destination. So if we say about medium, what medium do we have? as a part of a network. So some of you might familiar with metal wires, okay? And some of you might even uh, heard about advertisement which involve fiber optics connections. And usually, commonly that we have, okay, in your universities, in your libraries, usually we have a wireless transmission as well. So what are the difference between all these media? So metal wires, they use metals, uh, they use electrical impulse signals. Okay, so it means that there are electrical waves flowing through the metal uh, metal cables. So for fibers, uh, fiber optics, okay, they use pulses of light. So there are some lasers of uh, light signals that flowing through these fiber like uh, glass like fibers, uh, as uh, which uh, created as a cable. Okay, it's from one location to another location. So the details about this. Uh, cables you can look into chapter in module 4 okay uh, you can look into the module 4 uh, videos that I have provided before and the third one is wireless transmission so my wireless transmission usually they use modulation of specific frequencies of electromagnetic wave okay usually you are familiar with Wi-Fi and sometimes you are familiar with 3G 4G and these days we have even a new technology that is called 5G as well for the wireless communication so when we talk about a network, okay, you must be familiar about how the network is represented and what kind of topologies that we have for creating such networks. So for network representation, we often use this kind of symbols since these are the standard symbols that are being used by, the, uh, by Cisco for education and also for professional purposes. So for end device, we have uh, like this one is a desktop computer, a laptop, a printer. This one is wireless tablet, IP phone, telepresent endpoint. So this one is considered as end device. Okay. Then we have intermediary devices, which is a wireless router, LAN switch, router, multi-layer switch, and also firewall, firewall appliances here. And for network media, we have a symbol here that represent wireless media, LAN media, and also one media. So some important terms that I'm going to use a lot uh, in uh, our, in my lectures here are uh, network interface cards, 
okay, NIC, physical ports, okay, and also interfaces. So often the term port and interface are used interchangeably uh, for some purposes in terms of uh, the lab, uh, the lab uh, settings, and also for uh, for some description uh, within the layer of uh, the protocols. So when we talk about a network, okay, you must be able to draw a topological diagrams of a network. So there are two types of topology diagram that we have. The first one is the physical topology diagrams, okay, which illustrate the physical location of intermediary devices and cable installations. So this means that this network represents location of all these equipment. Like for example, here we have a server room that represent uh, a room with a lot of servers and switch related that is uh, that is important to the network. So we have this web server, web server, uh, email server and file server in a room 2158. And for example here we have an IP office for room 2159. Okay, and then we have a set of switches in room 2124. And we have a lot of end device in classes, right? Uh, for room 12125, 2126, and 2127. So this represents a location of device inside a network. Okay, so the second style of drawing a topology diagrams, okay, this illustrates devices, ports, and the addressing scheme of the network. So basically, this doesn't show you uh, where is the device is located in. Okay, and uh, this just show you what kind of addresses they use that related to uh, that is uh, interrelated within the network? Okay, so for example, for network address 192.168.10.0 here, okay, this is network address. You have all these four equipment under this network address, and for network address 192.168.100.0, you have these two equipment under this network address. Okay, same way dot one hundred one and dot one hundred and two and also dot eleven. So all of this represent the addresses, which is uh, uh, this uh, IP before addresses. Okay, so all computers in the network they have what we call a logical addresses. Okay, that represent uh, their position, their position inside the network. So when you send data, you send messages uh, along the network. Okay. The most important part is you have to have the send address and also the destination address, which is represented by this kind of address. So what are the common so what are common types of network that we have? So there are many networks, okay, and there are many sizes of networks that we have around the world. Okay, so example of network that we have is a small home networks. Okay, where we have for your own computers, your own printers, your own laptops, your own tablets. Okay, they are connected to each other, and they are connected to each other through a router, and they are connected to the internet to the router. So the other types of network that we have are small office and home networks or home office networks, which enables computer within a home or remote office to connect to not a corporate network and we have a medium or large network which is uh, mostly re related to uh, institution that they have uh, hundreds or thousands of interconnected computers and also we have a worldwide networks which connects hundreds of millions of computers worldwide such as the internet so uh, basic networks uh, types that we have uh, LANs and ones, okay. So network infrastructures are uh, vary greatly in terms of size of the area covered, number of users connected, number of a uh, number and types of services available, and also the area of responsibility. So LAN means the local area network, and one means a wide area network. So when we talk about LAN, okay. So example of LAN is this one: a home office, a branch network and also a central network so this all of these uh, yellow boxes represent a LAN okay 
So they are within a one network, it's one small network within the, the compound itself. So when they want to interconnect to each other, they have to go through the wide area network, which is the one where you have access to the internet or any cloud platform that provides the such service. So LAN, okay, is a network infrastructure that span into a small geographical area. So that's why this is a part of institution institution network. So a one is a network infrastructure that spans a wide geographical area like for example between uh, states or between countries like that. So usually big companies, big multinational companies, they have their own wide area network that interconnects those uh, factories that they have, okay, offices that they have uh, from around the world. So LAN, they interconnect and device in a limited area, administrated by a single organization or individual, and provide high-speed bandwidth to internal devices. However, in one, they interconnect LAN over wide geographical areas, and typically administered by one or more service providers, and typically provide slower speed links between these LANs. Okay. So when we talk about networks, usually that comes to your mind uh, the internet. Okay, so the internet is a worldwide collection of interconnected LANs and ones. So LANs are connected to each other using ones. Ones may use copper wires, fiber optic cables, and wireless transmission. So the internet is not owned by any individual or group, but they are maintained by certain organization that maintain the structure of uh, uh, of softwares and hardware that are related to the internet connection. So when we talk about internet, okay, uh, so you might have uh, listened, uh, you might have heard about intranets and also extranet, okay. So if we talk about internet is the world, what is an intranet? So an intranet is basically a private collection of LANs and ones internal to an organization that is meant to be accessible only to the organization members or other others with authorization. So it's basically a closed internet, a private internet between certain organization with a particular authorization. So an organization might use an extra net to provide secure access to their network for individuals who work for a different organization that need access to their data on their network. So Extranet is some kind of like a special access to somebody else outside of the organization that can get access to the information that are provided in the company intranet. So when we talk about internet connections, so what do we have inside the internet access technology? Okay, so there are many ways to connect users and information to the internet. So popular services for home users and small offices include broadband cable, broadband digital, subscriber line, which is DSL, wireless ones, and mobile services. Organization need faster connection to support IP phones, video conferencing, and data center storage. And sometimes we have a business class interconnections that are usually provided by service provider and may include business DSL, list line, and metro Ethernet. So we have a lot of internet plan these days that you can look for okay, with the uh, internet, uh, internet service provider companies okay, uh, in Malaysia as well. So in case you want to look at which plan that's suitable for you, depending on your location, everything, you can go and visit these uh, companies. So like Messis, DG, or Salcom, so that they can uh, advise you on what connection, what data type, okay, how much speed that you have in terms of you to use to fulfill the needs of your uh, communication. So when we talk about home and small office internet connections, okay, usually they might be using cable or DSL, cellular, satellite, or dialog phone. So most of us, okay, might be using a cellular line because we are, like myself, okay, I'm in a quite a remote area in Kuantan. So I have to use a cellular line to get access to the internet. So some of you who live in a big city, okay, like Kuala Lumpur, or even in Kuantan, we have some areas that provide uh, cable internet, which is a fiber optic cables that have a higher bandwidth, 
okay uh, you can use your internet in a more effective way okay you can do a lot of more things with that okay so for those who are really really in a remote area you might even have to use the satellite so these days i don't think we have a satellite uh, service provider yet for malaysian uh, uh, communication internet communication network yet okay so hopefully uh, in the future we might have one that can contribute in uh, connecting people from the remote area like in Sarawak or Sabah so you can get the access where you cannot get uh, a normal communication uh, network established easily so a very old technology that we have like for example dial up telephone okay this one is in the late early 2000 late 1990s that we have this one in Malaysia so it's quite uh, old and we don't have it these days anymore okay so there are various time kind of services that are provided for you but you can choose okay depending on what's suitable for you you can talk to the companies that provide these kind of services so when we talk about businesses internet connection okay so this one okay this are uh, more important comparing to a small house internet connection because of okay the risk involved in communication is higher so usually corporate businesses connection they might require higher bandwidth okay some dedicated connections and also some managed services so that they can perform they can conduct their businesses with uh, at an optimum level so they will not have any trouble at all in conducting their business later on so these days, okay, before convergent networks, an organization would have been separately cabled for telephone, video, and data. Okay, so this one in late 1990s, early 2000s, okay, we don't have a convergent network yet. So when you use your telephone or you want to send videos or data, any kind of data, they all use a different networks for that purposes. So each of these networks would use different technologies to carry the signal. Okay, and each set of technologies they would use a different set of rules and standards. So when we have a converged data, so means that all kind of data, voice, videos, and messaging, so they are all under one rule agreement standard. So the converged networks can deliver data, voice and video over the same network infrastructure. So the network infrastructure uses the same set of rules and standards for all kind of data involved in the network. So usually we, when we want uh, to represent okay, our, our networks and uh, we want to troubleshoot, we want to learn about how we are going to create a such network in a certain uh, area. So we often use packet tracer for that purposes. So in this packet tracer, you will do uh, like for example, the network model, okay? And uh, this one will help you master your CCNA studies. Okay, so I will do a separate video regarding the packet tracer as well. Okay, so we already discussed about uh, the network characteristics. Okay, so how do we create a reliable network basically? So when we talk about a network, so network architecture, they must have these four things basically. They must have fault tolerance, they must have scalability, they must have security, and also they must have quality of service. So when you talk about network architecture, that refers to the technology that support the infrastructure that moves data across the network. So fault tolerance, scalability, quality of services, and security are the four main basic characteristics that underlies the architecture need to address and uh, to address uh, the user expectations. So when we talk about fault tolerance, so a fault tolerant network limits the impact of a failure by limiting the number of like, the devices. Multiple paths are required for fault tolerance. So this is what we call a redundant connections. So reliable network provide redundancy by implementing a packet switch networks. So packet switching splits traffic into packets. They are routed over a network. So each packet could theoretically take a different path to the destination. So this is not possible with a circuit switch network which establish dedicated circuits. 
So when you have a packet switcher networks, okay, like for example, this uh, connection is interrupted due to cable breaking or something like that. So they will choose automatically choose another path within the network to send the data until the destination. So this is where we call a fault tolerant device. So when we look at scalability, so a scalable network can expand user and easily to support new users and applications without impacting the performance of services to the existing users. So network standards for network designers follow uh, an accepted standards and protocol in order to make the network scalable. So it means that when you create a network, you must consider the stage. For example, you create a network for a company, you must consider after 10 years, what are the needs of the company? Okay, so if the company will become bigger, you expect the company become bigger, okay, like for example, the, the number of users will double or triple, you need to consider that as well, okay, if if not, it will make you, to cons you, you will make the company to consider a lot of costs in upgrading the network later on. And the fourth one is the quality of, uh, the third one is the quality of the service. Okay, so voice and live video transmission require higher expectations for those services being delivered. So, have you ever basically watched a live video with constant breaks and pauses? So, this is cause when there is a higher demand for bandwidth than available and quality of service isn't configured. So, quality of service is the primary mechanism used to ensure reliable delivery of content for all users. With a quality of service policy in place, the router can more easily manage the flow of data and voice traffic. So, usually web pages can usually receive a lower priority comparing to the IP phones, okay? Because web pages, if they load slow, even if they load slower than the IP phones, okay, the damage will not be that big, okay? So, people will be awfully not recognizing any delays or something when they load uh, web pages. However, if it's regarding the IP phones, when you talk to somebody through the IP phones, you need to hear the other sides very clearly. Okay, if you cannot hear it clearly, the message will not be sent. So, a higher quality of service is required for the IP phone comparing to a normal PC that only being used for web pages. Okay, and the final one is network security. Okay, so in order to create a reliable network, you need to consider security as well. So two main types of network security that must be addressed is, okay, two main types are, so the network infrastructure security and also the information security. So network infrastructure security, the physical security of network devices, they prevent unauthorized access to the device. And for information security means the protection of the information or data transmitted over the network. Okay, so something related to personal information or something, we have our personal information act these days that guide that got your information from being taken by somebody who might misuse it or who might manipulate it later on. So the three goals of network security basically is for confidentiality. So only intended recipients can read the data and also for integrity, assurance that the data has not been altered with during transmission and also availability, which assurance of timely and reliable access to data for unauthorized users. So when we talk about the network trends these days, okay, so you, mostly all of you, okay, as a students, you have your own phones with you, means that all of you are interconnected with each other under one network. Okay, so there are trends that affect organization and consumers means that for example, you have a bring your own device okay, uh, program where, for example, in our lectures, sometimes we have a bring your own laptop for your own study, okay, for your own lab, something like that. Okay, so and then we have online collaboration like we have right now. So all the lectures are being conducted online, okay. Video communications like what I do, okay, with Google Meet or something like that for, to support the lectures, okay, and even in your company for discussing problems, something like that. And for cloud computing, that sometimes involving uh, distribution of data, okay, uh, for access of information, something, something like that. 
So these are the trends these days that you need to keep up with. So when we talk about bring your own device, okay, so they provide more opportunities and flexibility when you have your own device to access some information. So it's either laptops, netbook, tablets, smartphones, or e-readers. Okay. So for online collaboration, okay, like we have, uh, usually we have online meetings, okay. So even now, these days, the university are providing uh, online meetings for all the lecturers under the WebEx, uh, uh, Cisco WebEx platform, where we can communicate easily with all the people, okay. Whether we have uh, two campus here in Pekan and Kuantan, we can communicate with each other effectively without going to one place or another. So this we did uh, really reduce the cost uh, for communications or for some certain uh, programs that we have. Okay, so video calls are for a bit to anyone regardless where they are located. Conferencing has power, become a powerful tool for communicating with others. And video become a critical requirement for effective collaborations. And Cisco Telepresent Powers is one of the way of working with everyone, with, with everyone everywhere. So cloud computing, okay, so we have uh, cloud computing these days to store our personal files and backup our data. Okay, so we have our own data centers that stores all the data of the students, okay. So these are the strengths uh, these days as well. Okay, we have a lot of types of cloud. Basically, we have public clouds, private clouds, hybrid clouds, okay, custom clouds that we have. So in case you are becoming a professional with cloud computing, okay, you will find this kind of uh, keywords a lot. Okay, during your studies. Okay. So, and then uh, when we talk about technology trends in the homes, okay, so usually these days we have what we call a smart home technology, okay, becoming a trend these days, okay. So, oven might know what time to cook a meal for you by communicating with your calendar or what time you are scheduled to be home, okay. So, even these days, I heard that there are washing machines that can notify you when you close already being washed or already being dried okay by yourself we have some uh, some these days okay we have even have a cooker that have been uh, trending viral these days uh, okay where, where you can put any ingredients and come out of very beautiful meal afterwards okay so there are technology trends that we have these days under smart home technology so then we have a power line technology where power line networking okay can allow devices to connect to a line where data network cables or wireless communication are not a viable option. So you have you don't have a wireless uh, adapter, but you have a power line networking adapter. So all those information travels in your power line. Okay, using a standard power line adapter, devices can connect to the LAN wherever there is an outlet by sending data on certain frequencies. So power line networking is especially useful when wireless access points cannot reach all the devices in the home. And then we have wireless broadband. Okay, so this is what the internet connection that I have right now. Okay, in addition to the DSL and cable, wireless is another option used to connect homes and small businesses to the internet. So these are quite, they are more common uh, in rural areas okay, where, where I am right now. Okay, so a wireless internet service provider, okay, is an ISP that connects subscriber to designated access point or hotspot. So what I am doing right now, I'm using uh, the internet service provider provided by Cellcom. Okay, so I'm using Cellcom to connect to the wireless broadband right now. Okay, so wireless broadband is another solution for the home and small businesses. Okay, so it uses the same cellular technology used by a smartphone. And it Antenna is installed outside the house and providing wireless or wire connectivity for devices in the home. So I prefer using YouTube when I use this kind of technology because uh, I got a special data quota with Cellcom for using YouTube. Okay, so this service they provide a special uh, data quota for using uh, video streaming, like for example YouTube, okay, Netflix, something like that. So if you use YouTube, you got special data quota, so which is higher than normal data quota. So that's why uh, most of the lectures that I'm using right now, I'm using YouTube. If not, my data quota will be uh, depleted very, very fast. Okay. So for network security, okay. So we have a lot of security threats available these days. Okay. So for example, we have uh, regarding firewall or something, firewall access, breach, something like that. 
So network security is an integral part of networking regardless of the size of the network. So you need to consider network security when you create a network. So network security that is implemented must take into account environment while securing all the data, but still allow a good quality of service that is expected on the network. So securing a network involves many protocols, technologies, devices, tools, and techniques in order to secure data and mitigate those threats. So threat vectors might be external or internal as well. So example of external threats, they are viruses, worms, and Trojan horses, spyware and adware, zero-day attack, threat actor attacks, denial of service attacks, data interception and theft, identity theft. So this kind of information are basically from external threats when you connect to the internet. So some internal threats are like loss or stolen of devices, accidental misuse by the other employee, employees, malicious employee, employees as well. So in the university, okay, basically um, we also had uh, more internal threats than external threats basically. So some of the students, they, they learn something regarding ethical hacking or something like that. They, they try to, they tend to try to use their skills, to test their skills on the university network. So we have a lot of problem with internet threats within the faculty as well. So when we create, think about security, we must have a security solution to provide a good quality of services later on. So basically, you need to have antivirus, anti-spyware software installed. You must have spyware filtering to block unauthorized access to the network as well. So larger networks, they might have their own. They need to have an additional security requirements like, for example, dedicated firewall system, access control list, institution prevention system, and virtual private networks as well. So usually these days, uh, under the moment restricted order, you have a lot of companies establish their own virtual private networks to connect all those uh, employees okay, who are at home to conduct their work without any interference at all. So this course is basically to prepare you as an IT professional, which is a CCNA uh, certification and the Cisco Certified Network Associate Certification. So means that when you got this certification, means that you can demonstrate that you have a knowledge of foundational technologies. You ensures you that ensures you stay relevant with skills needed for the adoption of the next generation. So we focus the CCNA focus is on IP foundation and security topics. Uh, wireless virtualization, automation, and network programmability. Okay, and we have even new DevNet certification at associate, specialist, and professional levels. Which means that if you have grown your skills later on, you can continue to a higher, uh, higher uh, certification, like for example, the CCMP and the CCIE or DevNet later on. So this one will help you to validate your skill for your job role and interest later on in the future. So, if you're looking for a job later on, okay, uh, netacad.com, at netacad.com, you can click the careers menu and the select, then select employment opportunities the, uh, in the netacad.com to find employment opportunities by using the talent bridge matching engine later on. So, you can search for jobs with Cisco, Cisco partners and distributors seeking Cisco networking academy students and alumni. So I think uh, that's all for this uh, chapter, this module. So thank you very much for listening to my lecture. So hopefully uh, this will be benefit for you in preparing you for a lot of assessment later on under data communication and networking. So any questions that you have, please uh, provide them in our Google Classroom, uh, Google Classroom space, or you can even uh, comment it in uh, the YouTube page, but I try uh, because it's public, so it's better for you to comment it under the Google Classroom page. So uh, thank you for attending this course. Okay, so please don't forget to like and subscribe this channel. Okay, hopefully uh, I'll see you guys in the next module. Okay, so stay home, stay safe, and also stay study. Inshallah. Assalamualaikum.